2025 is supposed to be the year of agentic AI, so I thought it was about time we had a look at some agent libraries on the channel. We're going to start with one called PhiData. So PhiData, unsurprisingly, has the concept of an agent, and inside an agent we can have a model, so that could be OpenAI, it could be Anthropic, it could be Alama, or any of the other model providers. We've then got tools, so for example, it could call out to DuckDuckGo, it can call out to transcribe audio with MLX Whisper, it can call DuckDB, and a variety of other things. We've then got knowledge, which is basically pointing at some sort of database, usually a vector one. And then finally, we've, we've got memory, which keeps track of what it's learned sort of along the way of your conversation. So we're going to use UV to run PhiData. I found I had to set NumPy to 1.26.4, otherwise I was getting an exception. We're then going to give it the Alama and OpenAI models. We're going to give it the tool Y Finance. LanceDB is going to be our vector database, and then we're going to launch IPython. Let's import some modules, and then we're going to initialize one of the default agent examples that they use in the documentation. So you see we've got our model is GPT-40. We've got tools, which is just one tool, so it's Y Finance, and then we've got some instructions, use tables to display. We're going to show the tool calls, and then we're going to ask it to try and output in Markdown. We're then going to ask it, can you compare MongoDB and Elasticsearch? Now, you generally have to use the stock names of these companies, otherwise it doesn't work. So let's see how it does. So you can see it starts and says it's running and it's got some tool calls that it's going to make there. So we've got get stock fundamentals with symbol MDB and then the same with symbol ESTC. And then we've got get analyst recommendations, one for MDB and one for ESTC. And eventually we get some results. And if we scroll up, we can see at the top, it's got the fundamentals kind of pulling out the market cap, the PE ratio, the dividend yield and so on of the two companies side by side. If we come down a little bit, we've got the analyst recommendations. Remember, that was the second tool call. And then finally, it's done a summary for us of what it suggests the best pick would be. Next, let's change the model to Alama. Now, this didn't used to work well, but Alama recently added support for two things, so function calling and structured output. And now it seems to be a lot better. Now, when you're choosing an Alama model, you need to make sure that it has the tools tag under the models or library page. Otherwise, you'll get an exception when you try to use it. So let's import Alama from PhiData. So now we're going to update the agent to use Alama. We're going to use Llama 3.2, and then we're going to ask it the same question that we did before. And it starts off running. Notice that it only calls the stock fundamentals function. It doesn't call analyst recommendations function. Now, I'm not entirely sure why that is, but we are working with two very different sized models. So the OpenAI one is probably 1.7 trillion parameters or more, whereas this is a 3 billion parameter function. So it's perhaps it just doesn't understand exactly what we're asking it to do. But it comes back, we've got our comparison between the two tools. Now, when you're using Alama, if you set Alama underscore debug equals one, you can go and look in the logs and see what's going on. And so we can see there all the, the different data that's been pulled back and put into the prompt. So that's tools and the model. We can also give it access to knowledge. So I've copied this article here that analyzes Mongo's latest quarterly results into a text file on my machine. And we're going to load it into LanceDB and then query it. So again, we'll import some more modules. Let's initialize the LanceDB database. We're going to tell it it's going to be in the temp LanceDB folder. And we're going to use the mixed bread embedding model from Alama. And then we'll create ourselves a text knowledge base pointing at the docs folder on my machine. We'll give it our vector database and we'll say we want it to return five documents when it queries anything. And then finally, we need to call load on the knowledge base. Next, we're going to initialize our knowledge agent. And then we're going to ask it, how is MongoDB doing? And you can see it runs through the 2023 results and compares it to now. It says they've got good results due to their developer platform, but then goes on to suggest that the change of CFO has led to a drop in share price. Now, one other cool thing that you can do is have the agents work together as part of a team. So the orchestrating agent will work out which tasks need to go to which agent in order to answer your question. So we're going to initialize and it uses the same class agent, but then you pass in team. So we're going to give it agent and knowledge agent, and we'll give it some instructions and we'll tell it again we want to see the tool calls and use markdown and then let's give it another task so this time we're going to say how is mongodb doing and i found you need to say in terms of analysts and articles otherwise it will just use one of the agents and you can see it tells us transferring task to agent zero so that's the y finance one and then it says transfer task to agent one which is the the news one and you see it goes off if we scroll up we can see we've got the analyst recommendations at the top 
mostly suggesting that we buy Mongo. And then underneath it summarizes some of the content from the Investor's Business Daily article. So if you want to learn more about agents, check out this video up here on another agent library called Langroid.